In this video, I want to introduce you the last King Tiger tanks of the German army with a unique octopus camouflage scheme. The Tiger tanks were built by the Henschel company at their factory in the city of Kassel. Henschel employed more than 8000 workers manufacturing tanks and not just Tiger tanks. They worked in two 12-hour shifts, with the night shift up to 50% less productive than the day shift. The workers moved around a static tank whilst adding the parts. The finished tank would then be loaded onto a railway wagon for delivery. The final assembly line had an average of 10 Tigers being built at a time, and total construction time was around 14 days. And now let's see the military situation. In April of 1945, the German city of Kassel was soon to be under siege by the US Third Army. The city was in full panic, civilians needed to be evacuated, and many had already fled but a group of people stayed and rushed every morning to work. These workers, in a huge struggle against time, were trying to complete the last King Tiger tanks that would roll out the production facility before the factory would be forced to surrender. Materials were scarce, as well as tools and paints. Due to this factor, the workers decided to paint a rather unusual camo scheme on these last Tiger II tanks. A scheme that will become famous in history as the Octopus Scheme, or more simply the Octopus Camo. The Tigers were completed just in time and given to the crews inside the factory complex. After the Ardennes offensive, the US Third Army had pushed east and southeast into Germany. By the end of March 1945, elements of the Third US Army were nearing Kassel, having moved some 220 kilometers in eight days. Much of Kassel's center lay in ruins as the city had been bombed 40 times by the Allied Air Forces. Of course, among the bombing targets in the city was the Henschel tank factory complex. As the US Army approached, the Henschel works finished work on these last Tiger II tanks, which were taken over by two companies of the German 510th and 511th heavy tank battalions. Deployed on a military training ground south of the city was a battery of 88mm anti-aircraft guns. Beside the tanks and the anti-aircraft guns, the Germans had several hundred men of the 15th Armored Infantry Replacement and Training Battalion with which to defend the city. The German High Command had designated Kassel a Festung or fortress with orders to resist to the last round. In the event, however, the designation of the city as Festung had little impact on the outcome of the battle. In command of the city's defenses was General Major Johannes Erksleben, a communications officer with a very limited battlefield experience. On March 30, 1945, seven German Tiger II tanks rolled south of the city. Three kilometers northeast, the Tigers fought a meeting engagement with an armored spearhead of the US Third Army, resulting in damage or destruction to six US tank destroyers. The German tanks, however, were forced to retreat when their unit was subjected to heavy artillery fire. On the 1st of April, leading elements of the US 80th Infantry Division approached Kassel from the south, 
but were forced to halt by fire from the anti-aircraft battery positioned on a relatively flat area that allowed the 88mm guns to engage in long-range fire. On the 2nd of April, the Americans again responded with heavy artillery fire, destroying the AA battery. The US 318th Infantry Regiment moved the battalion into the wooded high ground west of Kassel, while the US 319th Infantry Regiment crossed the Fulda River and moved north along its east bank. By the end of the day, western and southern suburbs of Kassel had been occupied by the US Army. In the south, German infantry of the 15th Battalion mounted on half-tracks and supported by about 12 tanks, moved south and surprised elements of the 1st Battalion of the 318th Infantry. The subsequent exchange of fire saw six US tank destroyers knocked out and one Tiger II damaged. The German infantry was separated from their tanks by fire from the US troops, who had pulled back from the road. The German tanks continued south until they were struck by American 155mm artillery barrage that destroyed two tanks with direct hits. A second and similar German assault was less successful and was also repelled by artillery fire. One of the Tigers were then placed next to the highway exit east of the city in a suicide mission aimed at buying as much time as possible to protect the last civilians evacuating the city. From there, the Tiger, hidden behind the highway ramp, had an excellent field of view and the tank was under the command of Sergeant Heinz Wilms. The Tiger was approached by the 1st Battalion of the 318th Infantry, but the US troops were repulsed immediately by the fire of the stationed German Tiger tank. But like what happened with the 300 Spartans, a local civilian instructed the US troops and showed them a way to sneak behind the Tiger tank. US tank destroyers, accompanied by infantry, attacked then the Tiger from the back, knocking it out. This was the end of one of the famous Octopus King Tiger tanks. On the 4th of April 1945, US tanks crossed the Fulda River from the east and moved toward the center of Kassel. At noon, General Erksleben capitulated and was taken prisoner along with 1,325 German soldiers, effectively ending the Battle of Kassel. <laughs>